Welcome to the Rock Management Insights, the videocast interview series of University of St. Gallen's profile unit, Responsible Corporate Competitiveness. My name is Katrina Klöckner and today I'm here with Thomas Zellweger, professor at the Center for Family Businesses at the University of St. Gallen. Additionally, he holds a joint appointment with Babson College in Boston as research fellow. His research focuses on entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial finance and family businesses, and he is committed to providing family businesses with long-term support. Today we will talk about the emotional value of owning a company. Thomas, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for having me. In your research, you examine the question of um, how emotional aspects are to be valued in concerning uh, family businesses. So why do you think is this important for um, firm owners and their central stakeholders? And what is the specific challenge here? Yes, uh, I, absolutely. I think emotions uh, are something that's absolutely key in the context of owning and ownership in general, not only in the context of, of um, let's say, daily goods. We all know that we, we own possessions, let's say, like houses, mm -hmm. let's say, like art mm -hmm. um, or even cars as I just uh, displayed in this picture, um, not only for pure financial motivations. Mm -hmm. And we claim that also corporate ownership, specifically ownership in privately held firms, can have more than a financial meaning. Mm -hmm. Now, that not, might, might not be very new, but as we show, uh, what we show is that emotions can color biased or bias acceptable sales prices. Mm -hmm. So we don't only claim that emotions play a role, we also show that emotions are valuable when we ask okay. owners at which price they are willing to sell their ownership stake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you also ask why this is relevant, mm -hmm. and uh, I think this is uh, very true um, and a very valid question. And we believe that this gives us more indication about um, when it's likely that an owner will sell. Mm -hmm. Assuming that if you have strong emotional attachment, it is less likely that you will sell and you will mm -hmm. actually find a buyer. So mm -hmm. it's also, it has some impact on the, the market for, uh, uh, for corporate control. Okay. So what do you, th uh, what do you think is the, the central insight of your studies? And why do you think is it important for managers to know about it? Yes. Um, I would say the central insight is that emotions are not emotions and bound, let's say, to emotional actions and um, behavior, but it actually colors what we perceive as value and that we can put figures, monetary figures on emotions. Mm -hmm. And this is why we came up with this concept of emotional value, which actually is the difference between an acceptable sales price, so what people subjectively perceive as a fair value for the firm, as opposed to the objective financial value that we can calculate mm -hmm. through all these fancy valuation methodologies. Mm -hmm. and. Now, our research tells us what drives emotional value, mm -hmm. how it comes into, into being that emotions, socio-emotional aspects of corporate ownership drive up values, mm -hmm. perceived fair values of firms. And I think that's a, a one key insight. Mm -hmm. And within that research, we see that there are positive aspects of corporate ownership, like um, uh, the pleasure, the joy, Mm -hmm. of being at the top of a, of, a, of a team owning, controlling, exercising authority, that this has a positive impact on the perceived value of a company, monetarily. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at the same time, probably the strongest driver which drives up these acceptable sales prices is the intention and opportunity among these entrepreneurs to pass on ownership within the family. Mm -hmm. So if owners feel like that I want to, let's say, um, perpetuate the ownership within a family, this is a strong inclination among owners to overvalue the, 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 yeah. the, the value of a mm -hmm. firm. So mm -hmm. this idea of, of tradition and keeping up an entrepreneurial tradition has a strong inclination mm -hmm. to create emotional value. Kind now, and heritage. Some yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Heritage mm -hmm. concerns and, mm -hmm. um, and this idea of passing on the baton from, from one generation to the mm -hmm. next. And I can maybe just um, add an example to this. I, I talked to an owner about these considerations. He told me, listen, if you want me to sell this company, you have to pay me a lot because 
this is a family from the fourth generation and we have even a fifth generation that might come along. So if you want me to sell, it's going to be expensive mm -hmm. to forego that benefit, so mm -hmm. to say. At the same time, I think what's interesting as well is that we show that negative aspects of corporate ownership have an impact on his emotional value and through a dual role. On the one hand side, we see that psychological and, feels, and, psychological and physical strain, mm -hmm. you would call that maybe burnout uh, mm -hmm. uh, syndromes, sure. and the willingness mm -hmm. just to let go actually reduce selling prices. That's mm -hmm. quite um, evident and uh, it conforms with this idea of withdrawing from something that, that's unpleasant to us and then right. it reduces sales prices. But at the same time, and which I found most interesting to me when we conducted that research, is that negative aspect can actually drive up emotional value. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give an example. When we looked into um, firms and um, asked owners in these firms how or to what degree they felt relationship mm -hmm. conflict mm -hmm. among the owners and the top management team, we saw that at very harmonious constellations and let's say low levels of conflict, then people just, let's say, first of all thought it's a beautiful constellation because it's very harmonious so we don't want to let go and then indicate high sales prices, high emotional value. Mm -hmm. But as soon as there is some level of a relationship conflict arising, people wanted to step out. Mm -hmm. But there was a point where the whole thing switched. Mm -hmm. I, we call this escalation point, where people start investing into the conflict, escalate their commitment, start pricing sunk costs, and then they actually want to be compensated for what they have, the effort they have put into the conflict, and then they want to be compensated mm -hmm. and indicate higher emotional value due to these, let's say, compensation considerations. So and the price goes up. Right, then the price goes up, so it, it, it first it has kind of a U-shaped relationship uh, between relationship conflict and this um, emotional value. Mm -hmm. What also seems relevant here is to indicate that this willingness to let go, these acceptable sales prices differ whether you think about a sales price to outsiders or family members. Mm -hmm. And we show that people, for altruistic reasons I would say, mm -hmm. are likely to accept lower sales prices when they sell to family members. Mm -hmm. And this margin, let's say that the family bonus is at in roughly about 20% as we see. Mm -hmm. So people are willing to sell at 20% lower if it's, if it's kept within the family. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. But you're conducting your research um, in medium-sized companies, right? The main part of it. Are there any companies or any organization for which the emotional value concept doesn't isn't applicable or doesn't have influence? Um, well, th the studies we're conducting are in the context, let's say, of privately held, or let's say, a privately held context. That's mm -hmm. right. But even in context where you have, let's say, blockholders, family mm -hmm. blockholders of publicly quoted firms, these owners tell us. This is not a pure financial investment. Even mm -hmm. though there's a stock market price we can see at any at any moment, there's more to that. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, um, it's, of, our research is mainly applicable to the concept of privately held, and specifically, of course, family firms. But uh, this is not a, a strong limitation because then mm -hmm. we cover roughly about 80 to 90 percent of all firms with this research. In the, okay. um, but it might not be so applicable to the context where you hold ownership in a firm for pure, let's say, financial trading reasons, right? Okay. For that context, mm -hmm. our insights might not be that, that mm -hmm. applicable. Okay. Interesting. And um, let's, let's focus perhaps a little bit the application of your studies. How can managers apply or firm owners apply your um, concepts in daily business? Right. Um, I think there's two ways we can apply our research. The first thing is um, for owners themselves. Mm -hmm. and first of all, I would say owners, we make aware owners of, let's say, the pitfalls of being emotionally attached, excessively emotionally attached to a firm. Meaning that if you have a strong um, passion, strong emotional investment in a firm, it's, for example, less likely that you're going to exit a failing firm. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have, you missed the timely exit opportunity mm -hmm. because there might even be a situation where you just have so much emotions invested, but financially this is worth nothing anymore, right? So it would be wiser actually to distance yourself, reduce emotionality. And we, we help owners understand what the, let's say, the psychological and social, sociological mechanisms are that create these uh, biases. 
but also for consultants, let's say M&A boutiques, um, and corporate finance and departments of banks, we help understand how owners who think about selling out mm -hmm. could be better consulted to, um, to take it into account um, uh, these aspects and not have a conversation about the pure financials. On the other hand, I think that's and something an aspect that is that is just as relevant is on the side of buyers of firms. If I understand how emotional value comes into being, and hence understand how owners tend to overvalue or undervalue corporate value, mm -hmm. then I might likely be able to screen potential buying targets along these lines as well, and not only along the lines of commercial aspects or tax aspects or managerial aspects in general. So keep in mind some kind of an emotional due diligence that could help us, let's say, cherry pick the right, right um, um, owners that might be less likely or more likely to sell. Okay, interesting. So let's come finally to the research basis. Which kind of re research have you conducted? And why are you sure that your results are valid? Well, that's a that's a, a, a good question for any researcher. And I think it's um it's a particularly valid question if you start asking owners at which price you're willing to sell your firm. It's a very delicate question, mm -hmm. but fortunately here at the University of St. Gallen we have very strong um, ties to, let's say, entrepreneurial networks where we have the necessary, let's say, closeness so that owners are willing to tell us these very, uh, let's say. Um, uh, uh, delicate uh, answers. And uh, we have conducted studies in several countries already. So we have uh, findings not only from one country, which helps us uh, corroborating our findings. We have done uh, large scale studies in, in Germany and Switzerland, for example, with uh, several thousand people. Uh, being addressed with these questions and having conducted rigorous uh, empirical research with a control for any type of financial considerations that the owners might have before we then actually um, uh, show that emotions on top of that play a role. And for example, just on average, we find that this emotional value is about 30% of what owners have in mind and the rest 70% is, is objective financial mm -hmm. value. So Thomas, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks. And thank you. This was Thomas Zellweger, uh, University of St. Gallen's professor at the Center of, for Family Businesses, on his insights on emotional value of owning a company. For more information, please visit our website, rocc.unisg.ch.